Hi. Now you may remember that in the past we've talked about the moment of a force, say F newtons, about a point O. And if that force of F newtons was applied perpendicularly to the point O at a distance d meters, say, from it, then the moment of that force about O was equal to the force multiplied by the distance. In other words, F times D. But what if forces are not perpendicular to O? We meet this kind of situation quite a lot in problems. For instance, suppose you had a ladder leaning against a vertical wall. The kind of forces that you're going to see on this ladder are going to be the weight of the ladder, for instance. Let's just mark that in you're going to have a reaction from the ground here, a contact force. There may be friction, so therefore the friction would act inwards to oppose motion. There'll also be a contact force from the wall here. And if the wall is rough and the ladder is on the point of sliding down, there could well be friction up in this direction. So this, these kind of forces which could act on our ladder if I was to draw our ladder, just say horizontal for instance, say something like this, then you can see that these forces, if I call this point O, let's just mark that in, that point O, let's suppose I turn it across like this, horizontal, then there's going to be forces acting at an angle to this line. Let's just suppose we had a force here. Let's say it was 12 newtons. Let's just mark it in as 12 newtons. And let's say it acts at an angle of 30 degrees to the line here. And it's also a distance of 4 meters from O. So how do we do this? because it's not perpendicular to the line here. Well, what we can do is split this into two components. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with this, resolving a force, splitting it into two components. What we can do is we can take this force, let's just make it a dotted one now, okay? We take it and we split it into a force in this direction, perpendicular to the rod, and one in this direction, along the rod, towards O. Now the force that contains the angle, the angle between the original force and the direction that we're going, because it contains the angle, you should know that this is going to be the cosine of 30 degrees. It'll be 12 times the cosine of 30 in magnitude. Let's just mark that in, 12 cosine of 30 degrees. That force will be measured in newtons. And the one up here that doesn't contain the angle, that's perpendicular to this one, well that would be 12 sine of 30 degrees. Let's just mark that in. 12 sine 30 degrees. And that would be measured in newtons. Now I know that angle is 60 degrees, and it could be regarded as 12 cosine 60 degrees. But it's best to use the angle that you're given. So I'm going to say then that if we use that, well it would be 12 sine 30 degrees and the force would be measured in newtons. So when it comes to working out the moment of the original 12 newton force about O, then let's just write it down here. Let's just bar this off as well. Okay, we'll just put that down there. Then the moment about O okay, will be the perpendicular force, in this case 12 sine 30, 12 sine 30 degrees, and that is multiplied by the distance back to O, which is going to be 4 meters. Now, when it comes to this component of the 12 newtons, then 
there's no moment about O because this force passes through O. And as we've seen before, if any forces pass through your point that you're taking moments about, they produce no turning effect, no moment. So, this is the only force providing a moment about O. And if we work it out, the sine of 30 degrees is a half, 12 sine 30 will then be 6, and 6 times 4 is 24. And the units would be Newton meters. So we've got a moment then of 24 Newton meters about O. Now, here's another example for you to look at. You might like to give this one a try. Suppose we had, say, a rod, could be our ladder, okay, and we've got a point, say, A at the end that we want to take moments about, and we've got a force, say, of 16 newtons acting on the end here. Let's just mark that in, 16 newtons, and it acts at an angle to the vertical here of, say, 40 degrees. Let's just mark that in, 40 degrees. And the distance from this point here back to A is going to be 5 meters. So you might like to have a go at this. I want to know what is the moment then of this 16 Newton force about A. Okay, welcome back if you did have a go. So what have we got to do to this 16 Newtons? Clearly it acts at an angle to this line here. Well, we can split it into two components. Those two components will, will be one that is perpendicular, that'll be acting up there, and the other one's got to be out in this direction. Remember, this force has got to be in between these two components. And these two components are right angles. One of those then acts through A, that's this one, and the other one then is perpendicular to this line. So what are these two components? Well, we can just think of this as being split up now into these two components. The one that contains the angle is going to be the one that involves the cosine of the angle. So this force here will be 16 cosine of 40 degrees, and that will be measured in newtons. Whereas the one that doesn't contain the angle will be 16 sine of 40 degrees. Again, you could work out what this angle is. It's going to be 50 degrees because this is 90. You could say it's 16 cos of 50 degrees. But I prefer to always work with the angle that we're given. Okay, so when it comes to working out what the moment about A is, let's just put that down, moment about A, what's it going to be? Well, the only force now that is going to cause this to turn about A has got to be this perpendicular force. This one, 16 sine 40, passes along here through A, so it has no turning effect. So it's going to be the force 16 cosine of 40 degrees, 16 cos 40 for short, multiplied by the distance from here back to A, which is going to be 5. 5 meters. Now if you work this out, this comes out to be 61.283 and so on. And if we round this to say three significant figures, it's going to be 61.3 Newton meters. Let's just put that accuracy in there as 3SF, three significant figures. So Going back then to questions that involve, say, ladders leaning against walls, where some or all of the forces may well be at an angle to the ladder. When it comes to taking moments about O, I'm going to be showing you that we can split these forces, let's just say the weight, for instance, into two components. One will be 
perpendicular to the ladder in that direction and the other component will be along the ladder. So it'll only be then, if we just kind of break that force up, it'll only be this force that we'll need to take into account. And we'll be splitting up the other forces as well. So in my next video, what I'll be showing you then is how we can handle problems, say, on ladders leaning against a wall. All right, well, that brings us now anyway to the end of this particular video where we've looked at forces being applied at an angle to a line where we're going to take moments about a point on that line.